Well, welcome everybody. Hi um, everyone. It's good to see you. Well, I say it's good to see you. We can't actually see you, but you know what I mean. Hopefully, you uh, you can see us and you're you're tuning into uh, this sort of online uh, uh, time of communion. And uh, it's really important in these days uh, where we are all kind of social distancing and spending time away from each other. It's it's really important that we keep the practices of the church alive as much as we can. And of course, one of those practices uh, that's been done for 2,000 years all over the world uh, on, a, on a daily basis is the keeping of communion, keeping of the Lord's Supper. And uh, of course, we're approaching Easter, where we really think about what Christ has done for us. And that's what we want to do today for a few minutes. Danae and I are here in our home and we're just going to break bread together and we want to invite you to, to join with us. And remember in the midst of all the chaos and in the midst of all of the stuff that's going on, all of the questions that you might have going, going around in your mind and, and uh, concerns that you might have, in the midst of all of that, just to stop for a, a few minutes and remember that what Jesus has done is a complete work. It's a finished work. And in the simple act of breaking bread and taking the cup together, we can remember that his body was broken for us and his blood was shed for us. It's a really simple thing that we do, but it's very profound. Um, so hopefully wherever you are, maybe you're on your own right now, or maybe you're with a loved one or with your family, uh, you might, hopefully you've got some bread uh, and some wine or juice or a cracker. It doesn't really matter if you haven't got the perfect elements. Uh, the symbolism is what really matters and connecting with, with Jesus today. Um, so we want to read a, a couple of passages of scripture. I'm going to start off here with Isaiah chapter 53. And um, this is what it says. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It's really striking when you read through that passage um, that the words that are used there are, are words like sorrows and griefs. Um, afflictions, transgressions, iniquities, all of these things that uh, you could say are, are the negative things of the human condition, being sorry, being afflicted, suffering, that Jesus embraces all of those things for us. He embraces the, them on our behalf. And in doing that, there's this wonderful phrase in verse 5 that it says, um, with his wounds, we are healed. The word healed there means made whole. And it means made whole in every way. Uh, our, our souls are healed and made whole. Our minds are healed and made whole. Even our bodies can be healed and made whole through the finished work of Jesus. And so as, as we break bread in a moment and take the cup together, I really want you to think about today being made whole. That in the midst of whatever you are feeling like today and at the moment, um, you might just think about the fact that what Jesus did 
for us is a means by which we can be made complete and whole. And maybe today you need healing in your mind. Your mind might be running away with itself. You know, you've got all these scenarios and worries and concerns and you need our Savior, our Redeemer, our Jesus to bring peace to your mind. Um, maybe uh, you're aware of just your need for forgiveness lately. Maybe your attitude's not been great or whatever and you need to say sorry to, to Jesus today. Maybe in your body you're... Um, struggling with some ill health and you're asking Jesus for a touch physically today. He's able to do all of those things. Today's going to read a um, well-known passage of scripture, 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord I also, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yeah. So that's what we're doing today. We're, we're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again and puts everything right. One day he will. One day he's going to come again and put everything right. But until that time, in this simple act, we, we proclaim what he has done for us as the means for salvation. Um, so let's pray. Let's just take a moment and pray. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you so much for what you did at the cross on our behalf, that you were pierced for us, you were, you were broken for us, that you took our sin and our guilt and our shame, and that hanging on the cross, you, from the cross, offered us your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that you did a complete work at Calvary for us. You did on our behalf what we could never do for ourselves. And as we take communion as a, a church family, even though we're separated in, into our homes, we still take this together in this moment. And we proclaim, Jesus, your finished work, that your work is enough, that your grace is sufficient. Thank you for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you for cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for filling us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for renewing our minds. Thank you for healing our sicknesses and diseases. And so, Lord, as we, as we take the bread now, as we take the cup, I pray, Lord, that every single person taking part in this moment would experience a fresh touch from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So right where you are, take uh, your bread or your cracker, whatever you're using, whatever it might be, and let's take, take it together. The body of Jesus broken for us. Amen. And take, let's take the cup together. What's in the cup isn't as important as what it represents, that blood of Jesus that was shed for us. The blood of Jesus. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we've been able to spend together around the finished work that you did for us, around your broken body and your shed blood and all that that means. And Lord, we pray today for our church family. We pray the, especially for those that are isolated on their own, that they might experience the comfort of your presence. Pray, Lord, for those who are, are suffering from ill health, who need a touch from you, that they might know your healing today. We pray for protection for our loved ones from this COVID-19 virus. And we pray together for our world, Lord God, that you would sovereignly um, deliver uh, us from, from this virus, that, that governments would be able to bring an, a, a, it under control, bring an end to it. We pray for our nation, our, our government, that you'd give them wisdom. We pray for our NHS workers right across this land, that you'd bless and protect them. We particularly pray for those in our own church that work with the NHS or in other vital uh, services, that you would bless, protect, uh, strengthen and encourage them. And Lord, may we be a people who know what it is to keep our eyes fixed on you, who know what it is to pray, to worship through this season uh, until we come out of the other side. We love you, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, hopefully you've um, been able to join us and uh, join us again on Sunday. Of course, Sunday morning, it's Palm Sunday. And we'll be looking, carrying on our series, looking at uh, the man who changed the world, focusing on Jesus. So hopefully you can join us on Sunday. We'll see you then.